of the scariest things that ever happened in my life happened to me on this trip out to California in this 47 year old car. This is my Trans Am. It is not factory. I'm actually trying to turn it into a pro touring car, if you will. And you know, I'm kind of ignorant. This is my first time doing anything like this and I'm learning as I go. And I've done some incredible upgrades to this thing so far. I've already got an LS engine swap done on it. So it's fuel injected and just better for doing the long distance. I think that's a crucial part in building a true pro touring car. I've swapped out the front suspension. I've got coilovers from Detroit Speed along with the tubular A-arms. That was a pretty expensive upgrade. I've got vintage air put in this thing. So I've got modern heating and air conditioning. I think if you're gonna have a pro touring car and something you're gonna ride around the country, having that air conditioning is important. But let's get back to what scared me, okay? What scared me the most was I've toured this thing from Texas to Florida and back over a month. We did a lot of the repairs and a lot of the upgrades along that trip as things started to break. But I hadn't gotten into the mountains and on this trip, I took it into the California mountains outside of Malibu. And when I came down off those mountains onto the beach, I about had a heart attack. My brakes, I could smell them so bad, they stunk up the entire inside of the car. Right now it has factory disc brakes in front and drums in the rear. And let me tell you, that is not enough. That is not good. I actually thought I'd be okay because I had them all adjusted and pads done and tuned before I left, but I didn't even make it to Arizona before I ended up in the shop. The first time with my brakes, I had a leaky brake line. It was bleeding fluid all over the place. First repair of the trip, about 600 miles in, got a brake fluid leak. So it ended up being just a loose fitting on my brake line. I could feel my brakes getting soft going down the road and uh, I figured I better pull in here because I don't really want to send that girl through a fence. We got that fixed, we got back on the road and we made it all the way to California, but boy, when them things started smoking inside the car, it was uh, a little nerving for me because there's no shoulders, you can't just pull over. If you lose your brakes on a road like that, an old heavy car like this, it just picks up speed so fast. And it's an automatic, right? Which I like for pro touring because it allows me to go through the big cities and things like that and not have to deal with a stick shift. I understand stick shift is more hot rod, but when you're doing a lot of touring, personally, I like the automatic. Well, I did make it back across those mountains and all the way out to Phoenix, Arizona here. And I started looking at brakes and what can I do to make better brakes and to make better stopping power and to have something that's gonna be more reliable for me. And I found an American made performance brake company that happens to be right here in Phoenix. And we are at their showroom and it is Bear Brake System. These guys, uh, are American made brakes and they make brakes for race cars and high performance situations along with stuff specifically for classic cars like my Pontiac Trans Am. So let's get inside here and see what we can get fitted to fix my problem. Heck yeah. So this is what it looks like when you walk into Bears headquarters right through the front door. And um, you can see they've got a beautiful looking brake. From what I've read online, I haven't had the expert uh, explanation yet, which I'm hoping to get here today, but I think they're all zinc plated, uh, made in America right here. I don't know, I'm excited to be here. Upgrading your brakes may not be something you see from the outside of the car that's all sexy, but when you're driving it, it's definitely a sexy upgrade. Wow. So this is Bill, by the way, y'all, and he is uh, works here at Bear. I just told him my application, what we're doing with the car, you know, long distance touring, wanting to keep kind of classic look. I did upgrade to some 17 inch wheels that I have, don't have on the car yet, but I knew I was going to need a bigger wheel for bigger brakes. Um, and he's going to tell me basically what line they've got in stock that might work for me. But while he's looking, let's take a look at some of their parts here, man, on their displays. Pretty rad. And I'm pretty sure, like I said earlier, I'm pretty sure all this stuff is made right here in Arizona. Look at the size of that monster. I don't think we need something quite that big. I think this is more of what we really need. I don't really know enough about all these things. But I do like the look of that. I know everybody always thinks bigger is better, but I'm not sure that's always the case. So the truth is I'm really new to all this stuff. You know, kind of like motorcycles. I do a lot of riding on motorcycles, and I could tell you a good amount about them, but I'm not a mechanic. Okay, Bill's back. He's gonna tell me exactly what we're gonna get for my car. So this is your shop now. I heard everything you do here, or almost everything you do here is made right here locally. Yes. From like what end to what end? The rotors, the brackets, I'll take you to the machine shop. Like you're looking at hubs right here that we machined here. We outsource the, some of the calipers, uh -huh. some of the rotors. Okay. But for the most part, everything's made here. 
and assembled here. Right in America, right in Arizona. Arizona. All right, let's take a look. <laughs> this is our production. The guys are assembling systems. Bobby over there is doing rotors. He's putting hats on the rotors, bolting them down. And Tanner, Tanner, what you working on? So everything's built by hand. Yeah. Piece by piece. So he'll put all the seals in and then they'll do a pressure tech check. Make sure there's no leak. That's a six P. It's our six piston two piece caliper. Okay. Powder coat that in house. It's all hand painted. The logo is. Wow, that's way cool. So in what application would a guy need a six piston caliper? Because I don't need something like that. He's doing autocross or track events. Autocross or track. That's yeah. or or they just got 18 inch or bigger wheels yep. and they want to fill that wheel up with brake. Okay. Let's go to the shipping. This is actually your brakes. This is my setup right here? This is your setup. Awesome. We got spindles and then the front front brake systems, calipers, rotors, pads, brackets, hardware, closes fittings, the master cylinder, prop valve, our brake fluid, and the rear system. So this is going to completely convert me to... Uh, drum to disc. And this is going to be what size in front and what size in rear? 13 inch rotor up front with oh. a two piston caliper, a 10 and a half inch rotor out back with a single piston caliper. And this will allow you to run a 15 inch wheel if you decide to go drag racing. Really? I know you said you got 17s. Yeah. But if you want to step it down and put some slicks on it or drag radials, this will clear that. What about the front? The front, pretty much a 17 inch or larger. 17 or larger. Yeah. Beautiful. Way cool. Thank you. This is production warehouse this is one of our cnc machines oh cool so this is what they look like before they powder coat them yeah this is this is one operation that is awesome and they're in there on the tombstone it's too cool man so this block of aluminum just fits in there yep and then it comes it and goes, cuts it goes in as a square block that's how it starts life oh okay feel that and then they put it in there. It's too cool, man. This is our six piston. Look at that. So it goes through different stages then. Yeah. Wow. Ever wondered how your brakes got made? Now you know. Dave, what you making? We also do parts for Holly. Oh, right. So we're making, it's like carburetor base plates. Now, if y'all didn't know, I think Holly, would you say parent company? Yeah, they actually bought us. Yeah. Yep. So Holly bought Bear yep. how long ago? couple years i think two years now two, two years, years ago now so now bear is part of the holly team machine shop is pretty much done for the day that's why it's quiet yeah nothing wrong with that so, gotta send the boys home they gotta have their beer time yeah, beer time <laughs> back here is where we make we make hats and, we, and this is what they start out like this in this big block yeah the chunk of aluminum. That huge chunk of aluminum just to make that little part. Just to make that little part. Wow. So if you ever wonder where the costs come from on this stuff, imagine what it costs to not only power all these machines, but then man, staff that actually understands how to run these machines. And then you gotta still buy all the material. This yeah. is how your aluminum comes in. Yep. Look at that. What is that, like a 14 foot um, stick, you think? How about that? Yeah. That's our saw, one of them. These and then you stick it in there and they saw it down. Look at the size of this. This is our staging area. When the calipers get done in the machine, they'll come in here and get assembled. Different different systems, Jeez. different companies. And uh, as we need them, we pull them and then they go to powder coat. So how does this exactly work, anodizing? It's really just dye. Yeah, it's just dye. You're just dye. dyeing the metal. Yeah. So you're basically washing, getting all the material off of it. Uh -huh. all, all the grease whatever. and any type of any type of extremity anything that could be attached to a grease wise right and then this is just opening the pores in the aluminum and you do that by elect it's electric right yeah so you throw amps into it and that opens up the pores acid now you're opening the pore of the metal yeah and then from and then once you got the pore open then you bring it back there get the battery acid off Clean it again. Yeah, the uh, baking soda neutralizes the acid. Okay. And then rinse, dye. And rinse. And then you just soak it in the dye. Yeah. And it's percolating because? Because it's heated to a certain temperature. So if it was just a stand still, but the bottom layer usually will be colder than the top. So we so circulate it just to keep the heat consistent. It's just to keep the heat consistent so that the dye sets better. And then after it's done being dyed, then is it, you just wash it off again, or what do you do? Yeah, like it's going right now, so. Oh, 
carb. It's okay. So now you're just rinsing it? Uh, go on the sealer. And now this is a sealer? Yeah. And that seals the color in? Yeah, put the, another layer over it. Wow. And then from there you rinse it one more time? Yep. But then after that, pull them dry them. And, and some of them go on someone's car? Yep. Pretty cool, man. Ever seen anodizing done before? I know that it's a process similar to powder coating and the fact that it changes the color of the metal, but that's all I knew. But y'all also do do powder coating, right? Yep, we do it here. Sticking right. all the vital areas. So those stickers will keep powder coat from getting onto those surfaces. Yeah. That way everything fits perfectly. Ooh, the temperature, boy, you can feel the heat. It's, it's nice. We got red still in the oven. So, oh yeah, you can feel the heat coming off of that right now. They're cooking the, yeah, cooking four, the red right now. Degrees. Heck, 400 degrees for 20 minutes. Yeah. That'll be. And then they'll cool. We'll pull the stickers off. And then they'll go into the paint room. These will be painted tonight. Most likely black logo or red logo. But here's some. Mm-hmm. So those are all hand painted in there. Yeah, we use a syringe. All right, Bill, I, there's no way I can have you on this entire video and not tell people what happened to your arm. I had, a, I had a slip and fall and I broke my elbow. Just slip and fall? Yes, sir. It wasn't like some hot rod shit? I wish it was. Oh, man. And, yeah, man, I thought for sure there was gonna be some great hot rod story. No, no, I was, yeah, I was in Baja. There we go. Pitting, yeah. Mile marker, 280. Yeah. And I got run over by a 12 truck. Nice, man. <laughs> is the truck okay? Probably not. The truck, yeah, the truck was fine. So this is the front rotor. Yep. Which you said is a- 13 inch. 13 inch rotor. All drilled like that. And is that zinc plated? Zinc plated. Yep. Cross drilled, slotted and zinc washed. And then we're gonna get the classic calipers, which is a two piston PBR caliper. It runs the same pad as a C4 Corvette. So if you need pads, you can go to your local auto parts store. If, if you're in need on a Saturday night to go get a set of pads. Perfect. What do we got here? The master cylinder for your Camaro is our remaster, 15 sixteenths. Uh, it'll have the master and the prop valve, the hardline kit. And what's the advantage of switching from my factory master to this master? Well, you want to get the, the master cylinder dialed in with the calipers that you have on your car. Okay, so yeah. you always want to pair the two. Yeah, you don't want to do one without the other. Yeah. Okay, cool, man. All right, well, I'm going to pull my car around. We're going to get my parts loaded, and I'm going to have some new brakes on this car, man. I hope you guys are enjoying learning this world with me. I'm a motorcycle guy coming over and learning this car stuff. You guys, we're taking this thing on a cross-country tour, and we're going to do entire Route 66 top to bottom on the Shakedown Show. Every night there's a car show, and I know I'm going to make it the whole way. At least be able to stop all the way along thanks to my new bear brakes. Mm -hmm.